Hi, this is Trey Pastor, and welcome to the Horoscope 101 channel. It's Saturday, so it's my day, and this week is Worst Horror Movie Week. I think that's, yeah, Worst Horror Movie Week. I think we did this one time before, actually. But anyway, um, um, I, picked, I picked a movie that actually came out this year, actually in January, and I actually did a review of it when I went to see it, and it's, of course, <laughs> Texas Chainsaw. You know, the 3D version, okay, with the nice lenticular cover there. Love the face on the cover there. Um, this movie was horrible. The re only reason I went to see this, well, a couple of reasons, because it was Chuck's Chainsaw on Masked Movie, of course, so I wanted to, you know, see Love the Face chopping people up. And, of course, uh, had two incredibly, uh, inc an actress that I was, you know, well, I'm a big fan of her, and she's incredibly hot. I know it's a totally shallow reason, but... There it is, Alexander Dodaro, okay, who's absolutely gorgeous. Anyway, this story uh, sort of a sequel to the original. Okay, it, it even. Um, begins, and I think the best part of this movie is the beginning part of it, because they make it directly after the events of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, okay, which happened in the 70s. But basically, after Leatherface has done his thing and the girl has escaped, the angry townsfolk have come to the farm, <laughs> or the, well, is, it, is it a farm? Was it a farm? Right, well, to the, come back to Leatherface's house, <laughs> uh, basically to uh, get revenge. Which they show, and I, I think I give the filmmaker credit for the way they kind of reenacted that part. That was actually pretty cool, and that's the best part of this movie. But everything after that is, is absolutely horrible <laughs> in this movie. Um, basically, what happens is the townsfolk basically burn, you know, set the you know burn the, the house down with all the people in it, you know, Leatherface and the, and everybody else in the house, and supposedly dies in this fire. Of course, and then of course, you see a baby. Apparently, uh, one of the angry town folks they notice a baby, and you know, and they ruins it, and they take the baby with them. Okay, and they adopt the baby. Okay, now, now one of the reasons why this movie absolutely makes no sense is this happened in the seventies. Okay, now, basically, the story starts with after that little prelude thing. It starts with uh, a young woman. Uh, or the heroine of the story. Her name is Heather Miller. Okay, she, she and her, you know, she has a boyfriend played by Trey Songs. Uh, she has a friend Nikki, and uh, another friend. Uh, I believe his name is Kenny, who's like a chef. Anyway, uh, what happens is she she discovers that she gets an inheritance. Uh, she gets a letter that says she's in, as in her, her grandmother's past, and she has to go to Texas to collect an inheritance. So she goes with her. Um, with her boyfriend, her best friend, and their other friend, who's a chef, they decide to go down to Texas to, you know, see what, you know, what this inheritance is. So, actually, they go down there, and they actually pick up a hitchhiker on the way. Now, the, the, the lawyer that she meets tells her, you know, he gives her a letter, and, you know, they, they go to this estate, which looks absolutely fantastic, actually, and they, uh, are told that, um, you know, she gets a letter, and the lawyer stresses to her mind. He stresses that. He says it a couple of times. Read the letter, okay? Read the letter. Your grandmother left you a letter, okay? Read the letter, okay? And, of course, what she do? She doesn't read the letter, of course, okay? And then, of course, uh, the hitchhiker, they pick, you know, they go off to town to get food. They're going to have a celebration, to, and the hitchhiker they picked up is actually a thief, and he decides to, uh, while they're going, the rest of the, the crew went to town, he decides to steal of course, you know, and then he breaks into the house and delves further deep into the house, and that's when he discovers, or, leather, or rather, yeah, well, I guess he does discover a uh, leather face who's been locked up, you know, by her grandmother, okay, since he's family. And, like I said, first, it doesn't make sense that, the, the, first of all, her age is, is not, doesn't match up, because this story took place in, you know, the events of 
Texas of this movie, lead you to believe that it took place right after the events in the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So that happened in the 70s. And so flash forward, was it 24, but 39 years <laughs> later, you know, come on, this, you know, the, the girl is supposed to be in her late 30s, okay? If anything, you know, she's not supposed to be in her early 20s, okay? That makes, so, so first of all, they're, they're off with the time completely, okay? And then also the kills in this movie, okay? Especially there's one particular kill by Leatherface, okay? Well, well let me just go back, I'm backing up a bit. After they, uh, because I'm ramming a little bit, <laughs> the, after the sheriff, um, after the uh, thief, uh, you know, discovers Leatherface and basically frees him, and then Leatherface goes on his uh, little, I would call a mini killing spree. Uh, anyway, uh, the kills in this movie are absolutely horrendous. <laughs> okay, and there's a, there's a couple, the first of all, the kills are, are silly to begin with, and and the part that really, uh, you know, Leatherface is basically chasing, you know, the friends return to the house, they discover, of course, that, that, uh, that somebody, you know, that Leatherface is there and he's basically killed uh, two people and they're, and they're, you know, they're trying to flee. Okay, uh, Trey Song and, and his girlfriend and, you know, the main heroine and, and her best friend, they're trying to flee. And, of course, he doesn't wait for the gate to open up. He rams the gate, of course, of course causing the man to, to trip over, flip over. And of course, Trey Song dies by bleeding out, which is, I guess, maybe I don't know if he had his contract not to get, he's not going to get, you know, uh, a sawed in half by Leatherface. He didn't want to uh, get sawed in half, but I thought that was a dumb death. He basically he bled out, okay? And, and so the two girls actually go to town and actually, uh, you know, they escape, you know, you know, and they escape. And, and what happens later... It's basically, in this movie, they make, even though Leatherface is basically chasing, you know, chasing the heroine, in the he even chases her to a carnival, okay? And I thought that was a, probably a great opportunity to see Leatherface, you know, probably, you know, slice and dice people. But of course he doesn't. You know, they totally waste that opportunity to show him actually slicing and dicing people. You know, it's like, I mean, it's a concert. I'm not a concert. It's a, uh, a carnival. And you see Leatherface basically chases up into up he chases her into the to the carnival where she basically manages to escape from him and he approaches the thing, but he doesn't really kill anybody. And people actually see him with a chainsaw, but he doesn't actually kill anybody. And you thought, oh my god, this is been a perfect time to show Leatherface completely out of control and you know maybe slicing and dicing innocent, innocent bystanders would think maybe he's a joke or something. But they don't show that at all. And it's really, really a missed another missed opportunity. And then later, of course. You know, the girl goes to town and tries to tell the town folk that this is maniac is back and he's chasing them. And of course, it turns out that the townspeople actually, in this movie, they make them the villains by making them more evil, I guess, than uh, Leatherface. In this movie, Leatherface is just a mi misunderstood uh, individual, supposedly, even though he <laughs> killed a couple of people <laughs> with chainsaws and stuff. And then later, while well, chainsaw, uh, chainsaw, <laughs> where Leatherface has actually captured uh, uh, his uh, cousin. He's gonna actually when she's she's caught and used his bait uh, to catch catch the Leatherface. And Leatherface actually goes up to her to actually you know to use his uh, chainsaw on her. He sees that supposedly the family birthmark. Now Leatherface was supposed to be mentally challenged, but he recognizes the birthmark and doesn't kill him. Okay, and then of course then the town folks come and they uh, start assaulting Leatherface and beating him up. And of course, uh, this was when the cousin turns, the main heroine, even though Leatherface has killed her friends, uh, she decides, you know what, these townspeople are assholes, so you know what, let me, uh, and, and saying the, the, most, the most awful line in a movie I heard this year, she slides Leatherface's chainsaw and basically says, get him, cuz, which is probably so cringeworthy, I don't even know. The person who wrote that line should be bitch slapped because that is just absolutely horrible. Okay, and like I said, they totally missed a perfect opportunity with this movie. It just it's a horrible movie. You know? But the only reason I got this movie, you said, why would you get this movie? It's horrible. Two two reasons. Uh, well, a couple of reasons actually. But the three it's three D, and I'm gonna hopefully get a three D TV later this year. So I'm trying to get a, as much three D movies as I can, even though this one really truly sucks. But the second. 
and kind of a totally shallow movie is the girl that plays uh, Neil the heroine in this movie. Uh, she is totally smoking hot, and in my choice for Wonder Woman, I did a video earlier, I think when I um, Chase Passes Pass Ramblings on my channel where I talked about her as a perfect choice for Wonder Woman because she's tall, she's gorgeous, and she can act. So I thought she'd be perfect for Wonder Woman if they ever make a Wonder Woman movie. But anyway, back to this movie. So basically, Leatherface gets his chainsaw back and, you know, takes care of the town folk. And the sheriff, of course, who was, who was originally, you know, they show in the flashback sequence, uh, he, you know, he just says, ah, uh, after, after Leatherface gets his revenge by killing the, the evil town folk, <laughs> uh, the sheriff basically says, you know what? You know, clean up act. He tells, basically tells, you know, Leatherface and the girl, who's on his side now, his cousin, that, uh, you know what? Clean up this mess. And just walks away. And you, you scratch your head. It, it, it just gets wacky and wacky. This absolutely horrible. Then, of course, uh, Leatherface and and the, the heroine, she goes back, they go back to her house. And and basically, she locks the wreath. And then she finally reads the letter that the lawyer left her, where her grandmother explains that this is her cousin and she needs to take care of him, of course. And then she, he goes, he goes compliantly back to his underground, you know, lock, behind his locker room, and, and she locks him back up. And then, of course, her the people that adopted her, who you, you saw briefly in the beginning of the movie, and you can tell they're sort of assholes. <laughs> she calls them down, <laughs> basically, so her cousin can take care of them. And that's how it ends. Just a horrible version of a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. This is absolutely horrible. And like I said, the Jessica Biel version that came out, I think it was 2006 or whenever it was, you know, that was a true re remake of the original. That was a better movie. Okay, that was a real good movie because you got to see good kills but Leatherface and, and it was like a retelling of the original story and it was really, it had good it had good kills in that, good atmosphere and the story, you know, it made sense and you had Leatherface killing people and it was, and it made sense and it was, it was good. But this one, a wasted opportunity. Just, uh, so that's my choice for worst horror movie of the week. Uh, let me know what you think. Feel free to leave comments down below. And this is Trey Passer for the Horoscope 101 channel saying so long and take care. Get him, cuz!